Hi, I'm Peter Richmond, and I'm from Plug and Play. We're a web design and digital marketing agency. And perhaps for the last 15 years, we've been using Moz to help improve our customers' market penetrations, increase those conversion rates, and help businesses achieve their goals with their websites. And so over the last couple of years, actually, we've been seeing a real, a real trend uh, of headless websites coming to the market. And different engineering teams, marketing teams, and SEOs that we've been collaborating with I found different challenges and different ways of working with Headless to help improve their outcomes. And so today I wanted to take you through six things that SEOs should advocate for when building Headless websites, because these are learnings and outcomes that we've seen from real world projects that we'd love to share with you. Now, when you're thinking about going Headless, there's a couple of things to know. Well, first off is how Headless works. The key thing to understand is that the backend system, that system that holds all of your data is separate from your customer experience. And so those, fields and that data that needs to come over is coming over via an API to build that front-end experience. So there's key different ways about how you can go headless. So for example, you might be using a headless CMS, but you might also be getting data from CRMs or ERPs or PIMs or anything else. Um, and the key thing is though, is that this data is separate from the front-end and has to come over an API. So there's a couple of things to know. So for example, engineering and development teams often make some key assumptions perhaps about how they might go about delivering this. So for example, we've seen a lot of backend uh, developers look at headless content management systems and then consider that they have to come with a progressive web app or a PWA as a front end. But actually that's not really the case. Um, it's very common. And so a progressive web app might be something like Next.js, it might be React, it might be Angular, it might be Vue. There's lots of different JavaScript frameworks that you can use to build a front end on top of a headless CMS. But there are actually other ways of doing it. So for example, you could use a headless CMS to serve data to a classical CMS and build your customer experience on top of that. And we've also seen lots of businesses take a consideration of to a uh, composable architecture, incorporating lots of data from lots of different sources and bringing it together in a custom experience, which is a mix of progressive web apps, front end and classical CMSs. So depending on the complexity of your website and your business and how many people are involved, the key things you need to consider and advocate for um, I just wanted to highlight today. So starting from the top, classical SEO one-on-one -on, -one on crawlability. The thing about headless is that if you are going for a progressive web app, you need to consider all the progressive web app considerations. And there's loads of information on moz.com about progressive web apps. And of course you can use Google Lighthouse as well to identify key progressive web app challenges. But for us, one of the main things about doing this is having a static front end that's been created and making sure that whatever JavaScript framework you're using, you're not creating that user experience on the fly. So we want to see server-side rendering, making sure that that HTML is produced on the server and so that you can cache that full page cache of all the HTML in situ so it's super crawlable and really fast. And that's the key thing about this is that crawlability, creating that static page will create a really fast website but it does come with some considerations for administrators, marketers, and SEOs. So for example, um, how you go about getting content live. You might need to consider how you flush a cache, whether you need to flush the cache go globally, whether you need to flush the cache just on a particular page. So these are key things that you might want to ask about from your developers and your engineers, um, ideally close to the beginning of the project so they can bake in their understanding and their thinking about what you might want to achieve as SEOs and marketeers within your website. But those speed scores can be really looked into on Google Lighthouse. And using the progressive web app tools, you're actually able to see those key outcomes that you can improve your website speed scores from. But bear in mind that all of this data lives in that backend system. And the key thing you need to consider is that unlike, for example, a, a monolithic website content management system, um, so for example, you know, websites that you can go in and change the layouts and create the fields, and then Bob's your uncle, you've got a website that you can actually edit and manage that probably won't be the case with a headless website. And so you need to talk to your engineers and your developers about all the tags and categories, all the fields you need within the backend system. So that includes um, everything that you want to put on the front end. And the reason is, is that even if you've got the ability to add fields to your headless content management system, that doesn't mean that it's gonna make its way over the API and be interpreted by the front end in a way that you want it to. So with your front-end interface, it's likely that an engineer or developer is going to have to hook that up to the API, make sure that's being interpreted in the right way. So when you're thinking about this, what we'd love you to do is look at all the data you'd want on your pages and all the considerations, so everything from sorting and searching and 
organizing categories, subcategories, how are you going to manage that data within the taxonomy of your back end so that you have everything you possibly need now and in the future for your front end interface? And in that way, you can give your developers everything they need up front to build you the API that you're going to need and the front end experience you're going to need to be able to manage that. And this really rolls into things like schema and structured microdata and headings, because a lot of headless CMSs will have specific fields for specific outcomes. And you might find things like titles or headers and so on need to be considered within those fields within the headless CMS. But schema.org information, structured microdata, ways in which you can actually bring to life products or reviews or job titles for search engines, all of that stuff needs to be considered and baked into your backend data so they can come over that API. One of the other challenges we've found with headless content management systems is depending on the headless CMS and depending on the way in which your developers and engineers go about it, we've seen some challenges with URL editability. Usually this is based on individual products or the ways that developers and engineers have interpreted those products. But we've seen things like, for example, the taxonomy of the data structure within the backend system actually being used to represent the HTML on the front end from a URL perspective. And so you end up with this tightly bound structure between the data in the back end and the URL. And what we'd love you to do is raise this as a flag early on within the process and say, actually, as marketeers and SEOs, we'd love to be able to manage our URLs back to the root and have full dexterity over them. And we'd love to do this separately from the menu management. And we'd love to do this separately from the taxonomy of the data. And this will give you great dexterity between these three things on an ongoing basis and set you up to be able to create different categories, landing pages, or elevate content from deep in the URL structure back to the root if you want to kind of make sure that SEO uh, best practices are met on really difficult keywords that you're going to struggle to get uh, high in the search engine results pages unless they are high in the URL structure. And one of the other things you want to think about is actually on-page content management. The thing about the headless structure and the API system is that each of these fields is almost like a template. And that template then gets generated into a page. The challenge, therefore, is, is how do we manage different page layouts and content? A lot of us have become used to being able to create a page, change layouts, change structures, the way in which those landing pages can be created. But actually, if you're not careful, you could end up going back in time here and having to build pages on a template base. Different headless content management systems have different approaches to this. So it's partly down to the tool you use, and it's partly down to the way your engineers and developers use that tool. And so bringing those two things together, advocating for, actually, we want to be able to create those landing pages and be able to manage and change those layouts is a key outcome for us as SEOs and as marketing managers to improve those uh, bounce rates and improve those conversion rates. Otherwise, you may end up with a system where you've got a headless website and then a separate system for landing page management, which is just more software at the end of the day and adds more complexity to your overall uh, website. So those are the key things I wanted to cover. So the main things are that the SEO 101s of crawlability, caching, how do you flush cache? What does that publication flow look like? Making sure that that cache is distributed and managed in such a way that's nice and fast. And remembering that all the data that you need is going to have to be talked about with your developers and your engineering teams up front to make sure it's baked into the back-end system. Do keep in mind URL editability. And also keep in mind that if you edit the URL, we need to think about 301s. We need to think about sitemaps as well. So just keep that in mind on editability and how you're going to manage the in-page content on an ongoing basis. So those are the key things to advocate for from a headless perspective. I've been Peter Richman, and this is Whiteboard Friday. <laughs>